it's been a while, and boy did we have a great turnout. Hey everybody, Templar74 here with another Q&A video, and yes everybody, I know it seems like forever since the last time I've done a Q&A, but I'm here to do one now, uh, and I'll be honest with you guys, I was surprised with the amount of feedback, uh, but before I go ahead and answer your questions, I do have a couple things I want to say. First of all, I want to thank all of you guys for liking, subscribing, and commenting on these videos. Another great content on this channel really means a lot to me. I really hope I do a good job at answering your questions. Uh, and also, we're going to start with the oldest comments first, and we're going to be working our way back up. So we're going to be hearing the questions from the people that were first to comment first, and then we're going to work our way up to the most recent, which is a departure from how I used to do Q&As. I uh, thought I'd mix it up this time. But anyway, yeah. Oh, and there is one other thing I want to say before we get started. Uh, some of you guys have asked me the same question. Uh, I can see at least three or four here that have asked me the same question. So if I've answered the question earlier in the video, I will reference it back rather than answering the same question four or five times. But I will give you guys a reference point on where you can go back to try to find the answer to your question. So anyway, all that aside, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first up is Sergeant Dark Suicide. Uh, very interesting, very interesting uh, username there, Sergeant Dark Suicide. But you asked me three questions. Have you seen card captors? What are my thoughts on Serena Tuolola? And if I haven't seen card captures, you should. So I guess it's just really two. So anyway, uh, Sergeant Dark Suicide, to answer your first question, have I ever seen card captors? I have not. Uh, I have seen people comment about it on Twitter before, but I've never personally seen the series. So, yeah, I've never really seen the series. Uh, and maybe I might check it out, depending on where our situation is right now, because uh starting to grow thin in the anime department. But anyway, my thoughts on Serena Tuolola. Now, this is actually very interesting, because I do plan on doing a video about that probably next week for Poke Talk. Um, believe it or not... Uh, while some people's hopes have diminished or gone away almost altogether, I, I still feel pretty confident that we might see that happen, and I'll explain why in that video next week. But anyway, my thoughts on Serena Tuolola right now, I still think it's very possible, even though I may be in the minority now. So yeah, I hope that answered your question, Dar Sergeant Dark Suicide. Next up is Jake. Uh, you ask me, what is your plan for the summer 2017? What is your thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Rain so far? And what is your favorite Pokemon for each region? And also, thank you for saying that about your videos are amazing, Jake. You just made me smile. But anyway, to answer your first question, what are my plans for the summer of 2017? Well, most of my major projects are pretty much out of the way now. Uh, I do plan on doing another Serena to Alola discussion. And uh, I am working on a commission for fan fiction as well as doing Return to the Different Dimension. Pretty much all the major projects for this summer have already been finished, so I'm kind of looking forward to relaxing a little bit this summer. And now seeing Movie 20, I know I can relax a little bit more because that was the last major thing I was looking forward to. So yeah, summer 2017 plans have really kind of thinned out now because all the major projects have pretty much been out of the way, unless, of course, uh, Entity or... Uh, Total Poke or somebody else drags me back in for a collab, which could still be very possible. Uh, what are my thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains so far? Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains, right now. Best Yu-Gi-Oh! series, probably, I'm going to go so far as to say, uh, Vrains is, right now at this point, is better than Duel Monsters. So right now, Vrains is actually holding the lead for favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. Thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains so far? It's serious, it's been non-stop since the series began nine episodes in and it's still going full serious mode full plot mode and yeah I, it's a nice change from arc five i like dark five but brains is uh brains has really got me interested and in, brains right now is working on becoming the best Yu-Gi-Oh franchise ever in my opinion sorry everybody needed a drink of water there but anyway, Jake, I hope those answer your questions. Oh, I almost forgot. Favorite Pokemon for each region. Oh, boy. Uh, kind of caught me off guard with that one. I'd have to say Gen 1 for me, even though it's overrated. Favorite Gen 1 Pokemon was Charizard. Uh, Gen 2, 
Hmm. I really didn't have a favorite for Gen 2. They all were kind of pretty interesting to me, and we were kind of getting into this cycle of getting rid of the old Pokemon and bringing in new ones, so second really doesn't have a standout for me. Uh, third generation has got to be Sceptile. Uh, fourth generation, um, Infernape, no question about it in my mind. Uh, fifth generation, oh, do I really have to, do I really have to go to black and white? No, I, I'm just kidding. Uh, favorite uh, Gen 5 Pokemon would probably, for me, be Crocodile. And as for Gen 6, uh, it's a tie uh, between Zygarde and Brakeson. And Gen 7, I don't think you even have to ask. Favorite Gen 7 Pokemon is Rowlet. I love that little owl. But anyway, I hope that answers your question a little bit more. Like I said, Gen 2 is really the only one that didn't have a standout for me. But yeah, those are my favorites from all the generations. Charizard, uh, Sceptile, then we had in, uh, Infernape, then we had Crookerock, or Crocodile, excuse me, and we also had Brakeson and Greninja from Gen 6, along with Rowlet Gen 7. So anyway, Jake, yeah, I hope that answers your question, and again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, next up, Ryan Joseph, you asked me, do you think Blue Angel will start to crush on Playmaker? Do you think the Sun and Anime still has not gotten better and is closer to black-white level, or is it better than black and white? Okay, to answer your first question, do I think Blue Angel will start crushing on Playmaker? I don't see that happening right away. I think what's going to happen is, first off, we're going to see some Yusak and Aoi development in the real world once Aoi has been saved from the Knights of Hanoi. But uh, because, you know, Yusak was the one to find her. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that Zizen is going to mention that. So I think things are going to happen between Aoi and Yusak. You know, their friendship is going to start evolving in that. She may start crushing on him outside in the real world. And I think later on in the series, it'll be when she finds out that he's really playmaker and then things go from there. So, yeah, that's how I see that happening between Blue Angel and Playmaker. Uh, as far as the Sun and Anime, or Sun and Moon Anime, excuse me, I'm not yet ready to say it is worse than Black and White, especially right now, because things have really picked up here these last couple of episodes, and it does look like we're going to have a straight month of just development episodes. Um, after this month, that might be the turning point for me on whether I can say that this is complete garbage, black and white worse, or, you know, uh, whether it's good. Right now, it does look like things are picking up, which is something I'm very happy for, and that was one of my biggest gripes. Things needed to pick up. So anyway, Ryan Joseph, yeah, those were my answers to your questions. Okay, Satoshi Suri Dude, or SX, SXS Dude, excuse me. Do you think the Sun and Moon anime will surpass X, Y, and Z in the near future? <laughs> that, that, that's funny. That really is funny. And then you also said, and what are my actual thoughts about the anime at this very moment? Well, to answer your first question, like I said before, that's funny. Uh, no, I, I don't see Sun and Moon even being close to X, Y, and Z, even with the promising month that we've got coming, as I stated earlier. But what are my actual thoughts on the anime at this very moment? And I said this with Entity and Total Poke when we discussed this. The problem with Sun and Moon is when they do development episodes, they throw everything at it and they turn out to be very good episodes. The filler, it's like they don't even try. And the problem with Sun and Moon is right now it's mostly filler. So while I'm not willing to say it's horrible and worse than black and white just yet, it's, it's getting there, but it's not quite there just yet. The development episodes are actually really good, and like I said, I'm looking forward to a month of development, as I like to call it, over these next four weeks. So, yeah, it does have some promise left in it, but again, that promise will probably go away after this development month. So, anyway, those are my answers to your question, SXS dude, or Satoshi Suri dude, and I hope I answered your questions the best I could. Okay, next up... Oh boy, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Deharmic Timbiada. I, I'm sorry if I just completely butchered that and didn't pronounce it right in the slightest. 
Uh, I didn't know exactly how to pronounce that. But anyway, and you asked me four questions here. Okay, uh, I said in the rules that you could only have three questions, so let's see if this, if if you've answered a question, or if you asked me a question I already answered, I won't count that against you. Okay, so let's see what you asked me. First off, do you have any hope of Serena return to this anime, as my hope is dwindling? I believe I just answered that earlier with um, uh, Sergeant Dark Suicide's question. I believe I just answered that. Uh, believe it or not, I still actually do have hope, and quite a bit of hope, and I'm doing a video to discuss that here in the near future next week. So, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, your second question. Have I ever watched any hinty or lewd anime? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> you also go on to say, I recommend you watch High School DXD for all three seasons. Okay, I will uh, put that on my recommended list. But uh, no, to answer your second question, no, I have not watched anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's that question's a no. Uh, third, will you do a collaboration on any of your projects with me? Well, maybe. You know, guys, when people, when I do collabs with people, it's because they ask me or I ask them. If you guys ever want to do collabs with me, if you're YouTubers, all you have to do is ask. If it, if I can work it out in my schedule and it's a, it's a fun subject, then absolutely. But that's how things happen is you got to ask. So to answer your question, yeah, maybe just Send me a request, let me know what you're thinking, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, and number four, and I'm going to give you this number four because I already answered your first question. What are your hopes for the Pokemon anime in general? Is my hopes are down with my interest, to be honest. Sun and Moon episodes are not seeking much interest. Now, it's funny because I think I also said something along these lines in my discussion with Total Poke and Entity Maze. The thing about Pokemon is we can usually tell how an anime is going to be just by playing the games. What I mean by that is if a game is just kind of eh, it's just kind of there, we end up getting one of the best anime seasons we ever get. But if the game is completely awesome and it rocks right off the bat, we know we're going to get a, a lackluster anime. And sadly, that turned out to be true with both XY and Sun and Moon. XY, the games are just kind of, eh, they were there, and the anime turned out to be amazing. Sun and Moon, the games were incredible, and now we've got, well, we've got Sun and Moon. Gen 8, things may start turning around for that, and if this trend continues, then I think Gen 8, we are most likely going to see another epic anime like XY and XY and Z. But, you know, the jury is still out on that. Gen 8 is a real wild card right at the moment, although it is most likely the next game in development. But uh, hopes for the anime right now. I do have some hope that with these development in the next month, we'll be able to see some turnaround. Uh, other than that, not really sure how to put that. Gen 8, I think, is going to be probably the most promising hope for a, a great Pokemon anime, though. So, anyway, I hope I answered your questions, Daharnik, and uh, again, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong or I butchered that name, but uh, yeah, those are the answers to your question, I hope I answered them to the best of my ability. Next up is Jet Hawk. You ask me, do I think Cynthia will return for the Sun and Moon anime just like in the games, and also by what other returning characters that you might want to see come back for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games? Okay, now as far as this, uh, Cynthia return for the Sun and Moon anime, you know, I could actually see that, especially since she was in the games, but also because, say, the Gen 4 remakes are part of the Sun and Moon anime, although that's up in the air because I doubt that. Now that it's been confirmed the next game is for the Switch, so I really don't think the Gen 4 remakes are going to be part of this generation. I think we're just going to get Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, but... My hope is still there, or there's still a possibility there, I guess. Rather, I'm not really hoping on it. But I think the possibility is still really there. And you asked me, what other returning characters would I like to see come back for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games? Now, I said this before. If they're going to do Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, if they put a tournament in there like they did with Sun and Moon, 
I would like to see like a, the Battle Tree tournament go on again, but this time include like everybody from the past generations. Like we could instead of just putting red and blue there, we could put red, blue, and green there. Uh, we could put um, we could put silver in there. Maybe even Dawn or Nathan or um, you know Iris or Silen or somebody like that. We could see those come in there. And especially if they do throw in a bit of Gen 6 in there, I'd like to see a, a Serena and Clement battle in the battle tree. Uh, basically like to battle them. So, yeah, that would be my ideal scenario for an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon game, especially if they do a tournament. Like, bring back a character from every single generation and let them all per and part battle them all and participate in the tournament. That That's kind of my... Uh, that's kind of on my hope list, but I don't know if we're actually going to get that. So anyway, Jet Hawk, yeah, I hope that answered your question. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, next up, Leo1045. You asked me, would you prefer Serena go to Alola or maybe Gen 8? Do I think the cameo for female campaigns is over? And do you think it's possible for Greninja to ever come back or is he just stuck in Kalos? Boy, really mixed bag there. Uh, for what I prefer, Serena goes to Alola or Gen 8? Okay, and this is just kind of far-fetched, but this is kind of my dream, my not my dream scenario, but this would be like the best way I could see it. If Serena were to return to Alola, I would actually like it to be towards the end of the series. not Not right at the very end, but, you know, close to it. Could you imagine that? Serena returns to Alola. You know, she's been in Hoenn. We see Serena. We get reintroduced to her new team and see how better, how much better she's gotten since she left Ash the first time. Comes back to Alola and runs into Ash. Uh, we see something go on there, and then she returns with Ash to Kanto, and then we go on from there. That would be... That would be my best guess for a Serena, or that would be my ideal scenario for a Serena. Uh, that way she could not only just return to Alola, but she could also play something of a role in Gen 8 as well. Kind of like what Alexa did in the end of Gen 5 and into Gen 6, if that makes any sense. Uh, do I think the cameo for female campaigns are over? No, I don't, because I started looking back the more I thought about it, and I was wondering, on average, when female past companions came back. If we look at May, she came back kind of towards the middle endish part of it, like on the tail end of the middle part in the beginning of the last part is when she came back. Uh, Dawn didn't come back till almost the absolute end of Black and White, and so with only 30-some episodes in with Sun and Moon... I don't, I don't, I think it's too soon to rule out that campaign of the return of the fast feet or past ugh, female companions is over. I think we're too soon into sun and moon to say that that's really the case or not. But yeah, I don't think it's over. And until I see evidence to the contrary, I don't believe it's over. And then you ask me, do you think it's possible for Greninja to ever come back or is he just stuck in Kalos? Well, knowing the anime folks, he's probably stuck in Kalos. But, for sake of writing, if Zygarde plays any role in Gen 8, or Gen 7, excuse me, like he, he does in the game, or you see him in the game, I think that that would be if, when we would see Greninja come back, if he comes back. But uh, the safe money for the anime's history, um, I'm going to say no, probably not. But, yeah, those are my thoughts on that. So anyway, Leo1045, I hope that answered your questions, and again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, Megamat3393. Three, three, three. One, when do I think Serena will come back? Well, I think I kind of answered this before. There's no real way to tell, but if they do bring her back, I don't think it'll be until after, at the very least, it won't be till the fourth island trial. And the rate we're going, that might not be too far along because we're almost all the way through the second one already. And we're only 36 or 37 episodes in. So, yeah, we're not that far in and we're already halfway done. So I think if Serena did come back, it would be at the end of the four island trials. And then we move on to something. Uh, I think it'll if she does come back, it'll probably be between 
it's one or two possibilities. It'll either be between the Island Trials and the uh, Aether Foundation arc, if they decide to do that, and I don't see why they wouldn't, or it's going to be after the Aether Foundation arc and they do a tournament at the end, kind of like what they did with Black and White. So those are the two times I could see it possibly being ideal to where it wouldn't step over anybody's development or anything like that. Number two, will I ever do a face reveal? Mm, maybe eventually. <laughs> that That's the best I can say. Uh, will I ever do a face reveal? It's possible. I was going to do a face reveal, actually, when I got my Serena figure, but for some reason, the... Uh, I had my cousin order it, and for some reason, the Air Force's delivery service from Japan to the United States, it got lost somewhere. It made it through customs, but it never made it to me. And I was actually going to do a face reveal when I unboxed that, but it never did show up. So I'm kind of angry about that, and I'm hoping they find that package eventually, although uh, knowing U.S. customs, I don't think that's going to happen, sadly. And three. What do I think is the best of the Best Wishes series? I don't really know how to answer that. And to be honest with you, like I said before, Best Wishes was not my favorite series. Not Sun and Moon, I think, is better than Black and White at this point. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying that, but I still think Sun and Moon is better. Um, I would have to say the best part of Best Wishes was the fact that it was the first time in a long time Ash went on a capture craze. And I'll be honest, that was kind of refreshing to see because we hadn't really seen that out of him since Gen 1. And the uh, capture craze was kind of a nice throwback, and that was a nice thing to see. And I do think that was probably the only good part of Best Wishes for me. So anyway, Mega Matt 3393 I hope that answered your question. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, next up. Usurious Smile. You ask me, what's my daily routine? Well, my career makes it almost impossible to have a daily routine, but this is pretty this is pretty consistent with what I do for the day. Uh, I wake up in the morning. Uh, first thing I do is I check my email, I check my Twitter, and I check a couple of other little things, uh, mostly anime updates and fan fiction updates. Uh, after I check those, I'll usually go for a run, uh, then after I go for a run, I come back, and depending on the day of the week, I'll go work a 24-hour shift, and then I'll come back, and I'll be home for 48 hours. And uh, my routine before I go to bed is pretty much the same thing. I check, I check my Twitter again, check my email again, and uh, yeah, pretty much head off to bed, and that's pretty much my routine. Not really a whole lot to go on there, and... Uh, 48 hours I'm off. It's not uncommon. After I've worked to 24, I'll probably sleep till 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning because I don't get home till like midnight and by that time I'm exhausted. So yeah, your serious smile. That's pretty much my daily routine in a nutshell. Again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, hold on everybody. Let me get a drink of water first. Sorry about that. Okay, you, Septile the Hedgehog, your three questions was, what is my favorite Pokemon game? What is my favorite Pokemon? And three, what is your favorite Pokemon character? Now, number one, favorite Pokemon game. That's got to go to Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon, by far, is probably the best Pokemon game that I've ever played. Um, Sun and Moon is actually the first time where I bought both copies, one of Sun and one of Moon, uh, played them both through to the end and beat them both and that is actually the first time I have ever done that uh, I didn't even do that with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire to be honest with you up to that point I'd just buy one or the other and I'd play that and just call it good Sun and Moon is actually the first time where I've actually broken that and gotten both of them and played both of them to the end and um, so yeah Sun and Moon's gonna have to go up there maybe Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon may pass it I don't know uh, your second question, what is my favorite Pokemon? <clears throat> you got to go to Zygarde. Zygarde is arguably not just my most favorite Pokemon. It's probably the best Pokemon idea that Pokemon's ever had as far as Zygarde. Just because he's so complicated and he's so overpowered and he's got such an awesome purpose. I, I'll be honest with you guys. I like the 50% form over the other forms. 
but that 100% form is just OP as heck. But yeah, favorite Pokemon, gotta go to Zygarde. And third, what is my favorite Pokemon character? And I'm gonna just assume, Septile the Hedgehog, that you mean favorite human Pokemon character, and that, of course, would have to go to Serena. Just because Serena has had the best development of arguably any of the Pokemon characters, her character was very relatable, and overall, I think she was probably the best written Pokemon character we've ever had, even better written than Ash. Sorry, Ash. But yeah, favorite Pokemon character, gotta go to Serena. And so with that, Septile the Hedgehog, I believe I just answered your questions. I hope you, I hope my answers were good. And after all, I hope you like and subscribe and continue to enjoy the content. All right. Next up, Ibrian Rajawi, or Rajwani. I'm sorry if I completely butchered that name, Abrian. I know you're a, a loyal subscriber and a loyal commenter and a loyal fan, so I'm really sorry if I messed that up. But you asked me, what is your favorite legendary Pokemon from Kanto to Alola? Again, I it got to go to Zygarde. Zygarde is probably the best legendary they've ever come up with, the most original idea, and he's just got an awesome purpose in the fact that he's got multiple forms and just his purpose overall, Zygarde's my favorite legendary Pokemon from all the regions. So anyway, Brian, I hope I answered your question. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, Sam Redstone. You asked me, what is some advice to other YouTubers who strive to grow their channel? Well, Sam, I've... I've got two pieces of advice on that front, and it's a very interesting question because there's no real good answer. My advice for other YouTubers who want to grow their channel, first of all, make content that you enjoy because if you enjoy making the content, most likely everybody else is going to enjoy viewing the content. And second of all, don't be afraid to reach out to other YouTubers to see if they'd be interested in collabing. Um, and, you know, working on that. Because, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I thought my channel was never going to grow over 500 subscribers until I met people like Official and Entity and Total Poke and Skilled Legend. When I started meeting them and I started collabing with them, the channel just got better and better. So, I owe a lot of my channel's success to, to those guys. And... Like I said, those are my two things. Don't be afraid to reach out. And also, if you enjoy making the comment or content, excuse me, people are going to enjoy watching it. So anyway, Sam, those are my two pieces of advice to you. Thank you for asking that question. I hope I answered it to the best of my abilities. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Uh, Pokemon Andrew, you asked me, what do you miss the most about a more shipping and X, Y, and X, Y, and Z? I'm not really sure how to answer that because that's pretty much the thing I do miss about X, Y, and X, Y, and Z. It's not the only thing, mind you. I, I also loved the battles. And I think Sun and Moon needs more battling, to be honest with you guys. Right now it's just slapstick comedy, and that's fine up to a point, but it really needs more battles. So, again, uh, the whole Amore shipping thing and the battling, those are the two things I miss the most about X, Y, and X, Y, and Z. And I guess to a point, the serious content, although, of course, you know, X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, while it was great, it was just head-on, head-on, head-on serious, and not a whole lot of quote-unquote filler and break time. And Pokemon really has a bad problem with that, with their pacing. Like, they go, they either go all in from the start, and then they start slowing down. They either slow down all the way at the beginning, and then at the end they go... He heavy, 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 serious, 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 and with no break. And that's really something they got to get better at, in my opinion. But anyway, that is the thing that I miss from both Amore Shipping and X, Y, and X, Y, and Z. Amore Shipping and Battling. So anyway, Pokemon Andrew, I hope that answered your question. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, Vmon, Link64. Okay, you say, hi, Nimbus, I know these rules. That's good. Your first question. What if Pokemon made a movie as the final for Ash's Saga with everybody meeting each other 
and eventually leading to Ash growing up, becoming champion, and getting married. All the companions knew lives after time skip. Would this movie be a movie to remember in your eyes? Uh, without question, I think that movie would be very memorable in everybody's eyes, because not only would it be the first ever canon movie, uh, it would also be a huge leap forward and a huge jump out of the comfort zone of Pokemon. And, uh, yeah, it, it would be a very memorable movie. Uh, second question. If they do this and Ash's kid becomes the new main character, which, by the way, if they ever do hard reset Pokemon, although Sun and Moon kind of already did that, if they ever did do that, that would be the way to do it. Uh, do I think that this could bring old viewers back who left? To an extent, I think it could. I think if you wanted to bring back old viewers, I think X, Y, and X, Y, and Z was probably the way you do it. Is you make it serious, you do a well-written series, and you um, basically put Ash at his best. I think that's how you get older viewers back. But as far as this idea goes, I think it could, but only up to a point. And third, wouldn't it be great not, or be a great nod to the Gen 1 anime if Ash's kids' friends turned out to be Brock's kid from Pewter and Misty's kid from Cerulean, who have become become the new gym leaders, and to remind us of the original trio. Actually, that would actually be pretty cool. I'm not going to lie, Vmont Link 64. That that would be really cool. Pokemon really needs to hire you. I, I really do love that idea. And you went on to say thanks for your time. And you also went on to comment that I think a new generation is what we need to bring fans back. And like I said, I agree with that up to a point. I don't... I don't agree with it entirely because I think that would be too much of a pill to swallow, uh, no pun intended. But yeah, I think that something definitely needs to be done to bring fans back, especially after what Sun and Moon has just done. But I think that this would only do it up to a point. But anyway, Vimon, I hope I answered your questions. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, Simon Korra. Korra. I hope I pronounced that right, although I don't think I did, and I'm sorry, and I apologize for that in advance. You ask me, do I think the Sun and Moon anime will or can get better? Do you think the 8th gen will be good like Diamond and Pearl and X, Y, and Z, or bad like Black and White, or in between? You also ask me, what do you think the anime is doing wrong? Try to think psychological. Okay. Well, you, you kind of threw me for a loop there, Simon, with your questions. First off, do I think Sun and Moon will and can get better? Yes, especially right now because we've got a month of development. And development episodes, like I said, they go all out on. Fillers are just like, eh. Uh, so, yeah, I think it can get better. Will it? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Do I think the 8th generation will be good like Diamond and Pearl and X, Y, and Z, or bad like Black and White, or in between? And like I said, I think the best way to answer that question, Simon, is when Gen 8 finally comes out and you pick up the game. If, Like I said before, and this seems to be a trend with Pokemon. If you pick up the game and the game is lackluster, like Diamond and Pearl or XY, you know the anime is probably going to be the best anime they ever come out with. And if the game is really good, like on par with Sun and Moon, I think that answers your question about the anime. It's less than lackluster. Pokemon really gets into that trend, and I'm not even sure they're aware of it, but in my opinion, that's usually how I tell whether an anime is going to suck or if an anime is going to go all out, and that's just by looking at the games. So I'm going to say, and I'm hopeful that Gen 8 will be on par with Diamond and Pearl and X, Y, and Z, but I just don't know. And what do you think the anime is doing wrong? Now, again, that, that's a three-pronged question, and I've already talked about this, and I've already given it a lot of thought on that. First of all, they need to put focus into the filler episodes and do less of them. Like the development episodes, they go all out on. They're great episodes. Their fillers are just eh, and we seem to get a lot of filler. Uh, the second prong to that equation is we need to see more battling. After all, that is what Pokemon's about. The slapstick comedy is fun to a point, and the classroom fun, it's fun to a point, but eventually you just got to say no. Just, what are we doing? And then third and finally, they need, and I hate to say this because some of these side characters are actually very enjoyable, 
I think they bit off more than they could chew using this many main characters. Right now, we've got six of them. And I think right now, that's too overcrowded. And I'll be honest with you guys. Even at the beginning of X, y, X and Y, I was saying four was pushing it. I really did feel like four was pushing it. Six is just way, way too much. I really think they would have been better off just picking Ash and two or three others and just call it that and just stop there. No more than four. Because even four was pushing it. So anyway, Simeon, those are the those are the things that I could see Sun and Moon needing to do to improve and what they are doing wrong. And again, I did try to think about it psychological point of view. But anyway, I hope I did answer your question, Simon. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay. Sanic41, you asked me, Templars, what got you back into the Pokemon XY anime? How do you feel about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games not being on the Switch? And third, what do you think will be revealed in next Wednesday's news on Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, as it has been confirmed that there will be getting news on the game on the 19th of July? I haven't heard that part about the 19th of July getting Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon news, although that wouldn't surprise me. I just haven't heard that, so I don't know about that. So I'm going to kind of refrain from questioning that or answering that question. If we do get news, I think it'll be something about... Uh, I think it'll probably be a new, probably new Pokemon or a new aspect of the game, probably, most likely. Other than that, I really don't know what they would say on that. Uh, to answer your first question, what got me back into Pokemon XY anime? Well, I'll be honest, and everybody knows this story real well. I stopped watching Pokemon at the end of Diamond and Pearl because Black and White was just god-awful. And what ended up getting me back into XY was one of my friends from work was actually watching Pokemon XY with his kids. And we watched Pokemon growing up together ourselves. And uh, he had called me out of the blue and said, hey, have you been watching the new Pokemon anime? I'm like, no, I haven't watched the anime in years. You know that. And he said, well, you need to watch it because they're doing something different here. And I think they're finally going to do a good one. And that immediately piqued my curiosity. I went online, found XY, and started watching. Uh, the first episode I ended up watching was the the first couple of episodes. And when I saw Serena's reaction, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute here. And then I think what did it from that point was both Amor shipping and just the character chemistry. Because Amor shipping got me back. And then when I started watching it, just the character chemistry and everything started clicking I think that's what did it more than anything. So I think a more shipping played the biggest role in it, but the other thing too is just the character chemistry. And how do I feel about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games not being on the Switch? Uh, to be honest with you, Sanic41, I, I'm actually not that surprised and I'm not angry at all that the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games are not on the Switch. I'll be honest with you, if they were on the Switch, I would be going nuts. Because as I said in previous videos, if they're gonna re if they're gonna do a Switch game, it needs to be a, a new generation launch. So I think Gen 8 is most likely gonna be the next Pokemon games, and I think that those are gonna be the quote unquote Switch games, the mainstream games that are coming out. I think that's gonna be Gen 8. And again, I I think that that's the best way to launch a Pokemon series. I would have been very angry and disappointed if they had put Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon on the Switch. I may be alone in that that assumption, but that's just how I feel. So anyway, Senec41, I hope that answered your questions, and again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Excuse me, everybody need another drink of water. Okay, next up, Sigan Yochum, or Yochum, excuse me. Uh, you asked me, when will Serena return to Sun and Moon? And I'll be honest with you, Keegan, uh, the guy that quit or answered your question or the guy that commented on it, uh, Lingmen or Lingyen 203, um, he's spot on. That's a question that I can't answer. Nobody can answer unless it's officially confirmed by Pokemon, of course. So again, that that's a question I just cannot answer, Keegan. Uh, it, up to fan perception till it's officially confirmed. That's all I can say. So again, Keegan, thank you for liking and subscribing. Sorry I wasn't much help. Okay, next up, 
Sarah Hardwick. And you asked me three questions as well. Uh, your first question, did you start on my commission yet? I can't wait to see it. Uh, number two, what is your favorite Sun and Moon Girl? And third, who is your favorite male and female ARC-5 characters? Hey, finally, an ARC-5 question. Uh, to answer your question, sir, first off, yes, I did start your commission. If you guys don't know, I did take on this commission. If you follow me on Twitter, you've probably heard me mention it a couple of times. But I... I don't do commissions. They're not really my thing, but Sarah gave me a very interesting concept that she wanted to see and gave me full creative freedom to write it. So I went ahead and took it on, and I got to say, she had an excellent idea. that Her commission is going to be ending up going on my fan fiction page as soon as I'm done. I, I do recommend that everybody reads it. But to answer your question, I did start on it, um, but it's not done yet, and it's going to be a little while. And again, thank you for giving me full creative freedom on that. Number two, who is your favorite sun and moon girl? I mean, come on. It, it's obvious, Sarah. It's got to be Mallow. Mallow's the best pokey girl out of sun and moon. Not the best pokey girl, period, but the best one out of sun and moon. Got to go to Mallow. I mean, come on. It's Mallow. But anyway, yeah, favorite sun and moon girl, Mallow. And your third question, who is my favorite male and female ARC-5 characters? Now, this is going to seem strange for people, and these two are not in any kind of shipping respect. It's just how their characters were handled. Best male character, gotta go to Shun or Krozaki. Krozaki was just badass, and the motiv motives that he was fighting for, his development, and the fact that Krozaki didn't like anybody ended up becoming a Lancer and how he developed through the whole series. Krosaki, best male character from Arc 5. Uh, best female character from Arc 5, gotta go to Yuzu. My favorite of the U girls. Her development was really, really good. I really, really hate how they treated her and what happened to her, but it all worked out in the end, I guess. Again, I'm not looking at, at this from a shipping perspective, just out of characters and how they were handled. Those two are the best. So again, Sarah, I hope that answered your questions, and thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, Chris Herndon, you asked me, okay, you have three questions, and you asked me, what are some of your favorite shows other than Yu-Gi-Oh, SAO, or Pokemon? Well, you just took out all the main shows that I watch, Chris. There, there's hardly anything left. And I'll be honest with you, really that's true, because uh, apparently these television networks have not learned that rebooted shows are crap, and they shouldn't do them. But I guess I do have a couple. They're not anime-related, they're not cartoon-related in any sense of the imagination. Uh, I do watch Top Gear USA. That show is really, really good, starring Adam Ferrara, Tanner Faust, and Rutledge Wood. That show is really, really good, really good comedy in there. And that that's a good show. I'm not going to lie. I'd recommend that show to anybody. Um, I also like, on the more cartoonish kind of front, I did find a site where you could download it. Now that I have, I've been watching it nonstop. Uh, Megas XLR, that is another great show. Just completely random, and I love that. It, it's just a great show. I, I, I don't know what else to say. And probably the the third and final one, uh, probably Code Lyoko, uh, again, another old one, but a good one, and again, watching DVDs and, uh, seeing it being streamed on the internet now, really good to see these come back, because there's really not much on TV anymore, now that they've ruined all the good shows. So anyway, Chris, I hope that answered your questions, and again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, Deharia Timbadia. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. But anyway, you asked me some questions as well. You asked me, will I watch High School DxD? Somebody's already said that. Uh, now that two people have requested it, I will put it on my recommend list, and I'll get to it when I have the time. Uh, second, you said, what do I think about Sun and Moon? Like I said, the month of development is promising, but uh, other than that, I think it's just kind of there. And what do I think about a Serena to Alola prediction? Like I said before, if it happens, I think it'll happen either 
between the island trials and the Aether Foundation, or it'll happen towards the end with possibly uh, her returning for a Battle Tree tournament or a dancing competition or something like that to throw in at random. Or they could do that in the middle while we're waiting for the Aether Foundation arc. Either one of those really. Uh, as far as where they put it in there, I'm not entirely sure, but those would be the most likely candidates. Uh, and you also asked me, uh, you said I was going to do a face reveal when my Serena figure came. Um, now, I didn't break my promise on that because, like I said before, it never came. <laughs> uh, I know you guys have been waiting for it for a long time, but I said I'd do it when the Serena figurine arrived. Serena figurine never arrived. And uh, I'll let you go ahead and get your fourth question in here because I've already answered two of these prior. You asked me what other anime are you seeing recently. Uh, right now, I'm not really seeing anything recently uh, other than uh, SAO, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh. Those are pretty much the only three that I've been watching right now. Um, like I said before, I've got a recommendation list going now, so I might start getting into some other ones. But uh, right now, those are the only three. So anyway, Daharia... I hope that answers your questions. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, next up, Akubek 3. You asked me, what was the first episode or generation you remember first watching Pokemon? Uh, first episode in generation, uh, gotta be Gen 1, Episode 1. I do remember watching that. I didn't watch it when it first came out in the States. Well, actually, I might have. But anyway, regardless of that, that is the first episode in the first generation I remember, and I followed it up until the end of Diamond and Pearl. The end of Diamond and Pearl, I'm just like, ah, forget this. You know, I was going into high school. This doesn't interest me anymore. Black and white looked horrible. And, um, yeah, uh, Gen 6 brought me back after a friend rec or friend told me, hey, you need to see this. But, yeah, that's pretty much my Pokemon story. Uh, your second question, would I rather Ash have a crush on a Gen 8 main Poke Girl or Ash never having a romantic interest again following Serena? I think it's the latter. Uh, personally, I would like to see Ash never have a romantic interest again for a girl because it was what made Serena's character Serena's character. It was unique to her, and yeah, I think it would ruin two characters if they did that, so... Uh, preferably, if I had my way, Ash never shows a romantic interest ever again. And with it being Pokemon, I don't think that's going to be too hard and too much to ask for. And third, you ask me, if I was given the chance to write a 20th anniversary special in which Ash was kidnapped and only two or three main traveling companions could be sent to rescue him while the others are needed to save the world against uh, spatial disorientations causing havoc in every region at the same time, uh, the Spell of the Unknown crossed over with Movie 2000 and your return to the different dimension. Who would they be and how would you have them interact that best balances their personalities, history with Ash, and their Pokemon-type team mashups? Okay, that, that was a loaded question and a really good one and a very interesting one. Uh, if I could pick only two or three main traveling companions to set off to rescue Ash, I would say... I would send Serena, I would also send uh, Lily, and probably the third one, I would probably, I would probably send Brock between the three of them, and here's why. First of all, if all of his traveling companions are helping to save the world, obviously I don't want to take all the good experienced battlers and gym leaders away. So clearly I've got to leave people like Misty and Clement behind to lead the charges in in their different uh, respective regions. And as far as the three main traveling companions, the reason why I picked Serena, Lily, and Brock, Brock is a gym leader, a strong uh a strong trainer and has been with Ash the longest as far as any of the traveling companions. So it makes sense that he would go not only to be there to help kind of help the battle along or to battle to get to Ash if Serena and Lily got into trouble, but also to kind of balance the team out. And it makes sense considering he's been with Ash the longest. Serena, I think it's very obvious why I would send her. Um, Ash is her guy, after all. 
But also, we've seen what she can do when she's on her own as a trainer. I mean, we saw her with Marin and Professor Sycamore there with Team Flair. And Serena does know how to battle, and she's the closest thing to a female version of Ash we're ever going to see in an anime. And, yeah, Serena's interest in Ash overall and his safety, it makes sense that she would go. And Lily, I think Lily would go mostly just to kind of repay the debt to Ash, helping her be able to touch Pokemon again. Although she'd be the weakest of the three of them, I could see her and Serena working well together. And I could see Lily's development growing even stronger the closer they got to Ash. And thus Lily would make a formidable opponent. So again, I think that's why. I think these three characters would click and get along real well. And I think they'd help balance each other out as far as strength and weaknesses. So yeah, that would be my team. And so, uh, Akubek3, I hope that answers your question to the best of my abilities. And thank you for liking and subscribing. All right, next up, James McClure. You asked me, oh, you've asked me something personal, uh, not a Pokemon or anime-related question. Such a nice relief. Oh, well, actually, you did ask me something game-related, but you asked me, nonetheless, what is the strangest thing to happen to me at my job so far, and which game am I going to get, Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon? Now, I'm going to answer your Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon question first, James. I think I'm probably going to stick with just getting Ultra Moon and play through that. And if it's any good, I'll probably get Ultra Sun 2 later. But I think first I'm just going to get Ultra Moon and play that through and, you know, see what happens. Because I got ult I got the regular Sun game first and then I got Moon later. So I think this time I'm going to get Ultra Moon and then maybe get Ultra Sun later. So on that game front, Ultra Moon. And then you ask me, what's the strangest thing to happen to me at my job so far? And I gotta say, probably the strangest thing that's ever happened to me, a couple months ago, I actually got married and divorced within the course of a four-hour call. Uh, what ended up happening was we ended up, and I can't use names or anything like that, and I can't be too specific here, so I gotta be vague. Uh, we ended up picking up a patient, ended up having to take him in. He was drunk and all that good stuff. Uh, started working our way towards one of the hospitals. They told us they couldn't take him, turn around, go to this other one. Uh, they couldn't take him either. So we ended up jumping back and forth, ending up for almost a three or four hour ride. And uh, the guy started to get a little handsy with my partner and uh, basically asked her if she was married. And she said, yeah, but he said, your husband's not here now. Started getting handsy again. She looked at me and I'm like, uh, why are you? And she just kind of winked at me and said, actually, he's right there. And Within that course of a minute, I guess I'd gotten married within like two or three minutes. And so we ended up acting like a married couple throughout the rest of the ride. And uh, at the end, everything was said and done. I looked at her on the way back. I'm like, I want a divorce. Don't take this the wrong way. She's like, yeah, I want a divorce too. And it was a very strange thing because the guy started saying, he looked at me and then looked back at her and said, you can do better. She said, yeah, but he tries. So, you know, it was kind of a weird thing. Very strange interaction there. Huh. Uh, people at our station still make jokes about it to this very day. Like, hey, where's your ex-wife? I'm like, well, I don't know. And I actually make the joke with my brother because he's actually been divorced before. I'm like, unlike you, I, I've actually on good terms with my ex. You know, everybody makes jokes about it. And even me and my partner that night, she's real, real good sport about it. And we we have fun. We had fun with it, and it's arguably the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. So anyway, James, I hope that answered your questions, and thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, JD Jade one you asked me, aside from Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! franchises, are there any other animes past or present you enjoy and would consider doing reviews for? Um, SAO, that's a good one. Uh, I do want to review Ordinal Scales so bad, but uh, the file that I got of it subbed corrupted, so now I'm waiting to see if it pops up subbed anywhere else, so I can watch it and do a proper review for that for Sword Art Online. Uh, after that, and it has been confirmed that there will be a Season 3 here for too long, maybe do reviews for that too. Uh, I do have a recommend list that's growing longer now, but haven't watched anything on it as of yet. So, I don't know. Okay, 
Question two, what types of deck do you enjoy building or running when playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, I actually have three main decks right at the moment. I have my Egyptian God deck, my Blue Eyes White Dragon deck, or I also call it my Kaiba Arc 5 deck because I also threw in some Pendulum cards and things like that. And then I also have a third main deck I run with, which is, uh, I like to call it my legacy deck. And basically it's got key cards from all the different dimensions working together in it. A really complicated deck, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. It incorporates all the summoning with, with the exception of Link Summoning, because that has yet to make it to mainstream card play here in the States. Okay. Uh, number three, Serena has come back to Alola, trials are done, school is burned to the ground, expletive ground. What's the most interesting plotline you could write for the series if you were to change the anime or in charge of the anime writing staff? First of all, bring Serena back, start battling, leave the Pokemon school, travel the islands. That would be the three major things I would do right now if I were brought in and say, okay, you're now in charge of the writing for Sun and Moon. Those would be the first three things I take care of. So anyway, JD Jade, I hope I answered your questions. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Next up, John B., also known as Smooth Chocolate. Uh, you ask me, although it may be possible Serena may return to Sun and Moon later on at the event that she does not come back, who would be the next of Ash's companions you'd like to see travel with them again? <clears throat> Brock. Brock. No question. It gotta be Brock. Okay, your second question. What do you think about Link summoning in Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, for the actual trading card game, complicated as heck. Anime, awesome plotline. Those are my thoughts about it. Link summoning in the actual card game, it's a pain in the ass. But as far as an anime perspective and an anime plotline, works great. Okay, and three. How did you feel about Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds, just out of curiosity? 5Ds was good, not on par with brain or not on par with dual monsters, definitely not with brains. 5Ds it it ties with Arc 5, but it's not like GX bad. GX and it's complicated. I don't hate GX. I think 5Ds, GX, and Arc 5 all kind of tie with one another. Nothing could be worse than Zexel. It's just that 5Ds was not on par with Reigns or Dual Monsters. I, I just don't know why. Although, the mature plotline was refreshing, and maybe that's why I'm loving on Reigns so much. But anyway, I hope that answers your question, John B. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, next up, Nightshock plays. And your three questions. Uh, your first question, try to keep it out of Pokemon for a bit. Thank you very much, Nightshocks. You asked me, what's the craziest thing I've seen as an EMT? Again, can't go into much detail on that because of certain laws and restrictions on that. Probably the craziest thing I'll, I'll say that I've seen... Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever watched the Dukes of Hazard, but... If you Google it in Dukes of Hazzard, click General Lee Jump. We actually had a Crown Vic one time do a General Lee Jump and ended up 25 feet up into a tree. We still don't know how the kid got it up there. We still don't know how we how we got it down without killing somebody. And I'm still amazed to heck that we managed to get somebody up there to get the kid out. Uh, he was passed out behind the wheel. How he got that a crown vic to jump 25 feet into a tree I, I i just don't know in fact to this day all of our department and even the local cops we all pulled up on scene we're like how the heck did that happen it's just one of those things like y you can't make that stuff up and in fact uh, the police officer that got there first he was actually looking around for crane tracks because he couldn't believe that the kid did it himself so again, probably that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, Crown Vic, 25 feet up into a tree, and lucky me, I was the one that got to scale up to try to get to the guy. Uh, your second question. Do you suspect that Ash and Sun and Moon has the potential to surpass X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, Ash? <laughs> that, that, that's really funny, Night Shocks. That, that's pretty funny. No, no, I don't, I don't suspect that he has the potential. I don't think he will. 
I don't think anybody's ever going to top X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, Ash. And third question. This may be over the top, but we could see Z move special series that it has Serena replacing an Alon like character, where Serena is involved with the Aether Foundation to protect Pokemon, and due to her dancing skills, she can use Z moves. I was thinking they could hide Serena with a with like a special suit or something with a robotic voice that doesn't suspect it. Other than her Pokemon, eventually she could become Ash's rival in battling in the Alola League if there is one, where Ash beats Serena using a similar plot style to or bow style to Ash, and um, either loses to a Tobias-like character or wins the league. Uh, thoughts on this plot and how I think Sun Moon's story should go. First of all, reading that, that is an awesome fan fiction idea, by the way. Second of all, that that is a really, really awesome, awesome uh, idea. I think it's a really cool idea. I don't think it'll ever happen, but that is definitely an awesome idea. And if you or somebody else could find somebody that would write a fan fiction like that, I would start reading it in a heartbeat. Uh, and thoughts on the plot, or not, those are my thoughts on that plot, by the way. And you asked me, how would the Sun and Moon story to go? Or how would I like to see the Sun and Moon story go? Three things. Ditch the school idea. Keep traveling. Battle focus. Those three things would fix Sun and Moon almost immediately, in my opinion. So anyway, Night Shock plays. I hope that answered your questions. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay, next up, Chris Herndon. I hope this is another Chris, because otherwise I... I'm just, I don't know. But anyway, you asked me only two questions today. You asked me, what do I do to get the ideas for Return to the Different Dimension? Well, believe it or not, a lot of the ideas for Return to the Different Dimension come while I'm out running. Uh, I got to run for my job to stay in shape, and that's where a lot of my ideas come from. It's not uncommon for me to be out in the middle of a run listening to my MP3 player, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, that's a great idea. And in fact, it's gotten to the point now where I keep a little notepad in my back pocket and I will actually write down ideas as they pop into my head and I will come back home after I get done running and uh, basically write them down and start running with it. So that's how I come up with my ideas. And then you also asked me, do I plan on doing more fan fiction after Return to the Different Dimension is over? Uh, you also commented, if you really, if you couldn't tell, I really love your fan fiction. Well, thank you, Chris. That means a lot. But uh, as far as do I know or do I plan on doing more fan fiction after Return to the Different Dimension, I don't know. Uh, right now, Return to the Different Dimension is already, I'm going to say, a year and a half long project, maybe even longer. I've only gotten up to a year written of it so far, or a year of ideas written of it so far. So um, the short answer to your question, I don't know. So just wait and see, I guess, and I know that wasn't much of an answer, but again, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope I answered your questions the best I could. All right, and now Christopher Herndon. This had better be a third one for Pete's sake, or, because I know it's not, it's not that, from what I hear, it's not that uncommon of a name. It's actually pretty common, but I really hope these are all different people. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and answer it anyway. You asked me, I only have one question. Have I seen Movie 20, and what are my thoughts? I missed seeing the stream. Well, I did see Movie 20 in the stream, and I'll be honest with you guys, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying it. I didn't like it. I did not like the movie. Uh, it could just be because I watched it raw, and then watching it with subs may help. Uh, that's happened a few times where I thought a movie was complete trash. Then the subs came out, I watched it with subs, and it turned out to be better. It, it could very well be the same case with Movie 20, but I I didn't like it. I don't know what it was about it. It just felt completely off to me. I didn't feel like it was... I hate to say it, but I actually think, in my opinion, the Hoopa movie was better done than Movie 20. Which is really sad, because I thought that this was probably going to be the best Pokemon movie ever. And I watched it, and it turns out it's not. And, I didn't like it at all. Even though I had so much hope for it, I didn't like it. But again, that may change as soon as subs come out, but I doubt it. I don't know what it was exactly. I just I just didn't like it. So anyway, Chris, I, or Christopher, I hope that answered your question. 
And that looks like all the comments and questions for this year's Q&A or this summer's Q&A. Uh, again, everybody, I really want to take a second to thank you guys for liking and subscribing to all the great content on this channel. It means a lot to me. I'm really glad you enjoyed. I really enjoyed coming and answering some of your questions. I hope I answered them to the best of my abilities for you. Again, thank you for liking and subscribing. And as always, everybody, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.